think we are streaming. Believe so. Let's confirm that's the case. Um, Twitch TV, Pwn College, chat. That, that, that looks there. I hear myself. That looks there. I hear myself. Yep. Okay, cool. That seems to be working. We'll give everyone a couple of minutes to join in. Let's actually double check this setup. I wonder what happens to this window. Because I'm like, I'm basically I'm recording one window, which is different. Normally I record the desktop. But I'm not. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it works. I think it worked last time. Twitch. We got viewers now. Cool. That got some people here. This is still working. But yep. Okay. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and I just saw now that the notification popped up. Let's go ahead and start office hours. So uh, we currently have two assignments live. We have Talking Web, which now thanks to the fancy update, you can see the, the countdown until it's due, at least if you refresh the page. Talking Web is due in 12 hours and 54 minutes as of this moment. Of course, if you're watching in the future on YouTube, not true. Uh, but as of right now, 12 hours, 54 minutes, this assignment is due. Everyone that is here right now, I highly encourage you to start sooner rather than later if you've somehow not already started. It's very common, unfortunately, that as we get closer and closer to the very end of the deadline, that the server becomes very overwhelmed and you're going to have a substantially increased level of frustration working on the assignment if the server starts having issues. And uh, in the past, it's been usable, it's just been less than ideal, and we do not make extensions for that situation. If you decide to wait for the last moment, that's on you. Unfortunately, half of you in this class right now are waiting until the last possible hour to do it. And that is going to unfortunately be your problem. So as long as it remains even slightly functional, we are not extending that deadline. So the server will start failing close to the deadline. and You will be very sad. You should start sooner rather than later. All right, there's my rant about that. So that's the current assignment or one of the current assignments due in 12 hours, 54 minutes. Uh, and then assembly crash course, which is due in nine days, 13 hours and six minutes. So in this office hours, I figured I would continue talking about talking web, especially since it is due in just several hours. Uh, and I figured we would kind of finish our discussion of some of the ways of interacting with real web applications and why some of these challenges focus on some of the concepts they do. So for example, what's going on with the form data versus JSON data? Um, how do real web applications actually work? Okay, so uh, I'm realizing now I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some ability of capturing Huh. How do I want to do this? Contemplating switching out of this mode of just recording a single window. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do that. Do that. Do that. I think if I click this, we'll do that. That's that's that. Let's go ahead and switch to the other mode. That way we can start. I'm going to use the desktop mode and stuff uh, for some of this. So it'll just make it easier. Okay, cool. Looks like that works. We're going to switch this window over here. 
That's still working. Okay. Let's now go ahead and uh, demonstrate some of the things we can do. So I think in the last office hours, I showed you what it looks like to log in to some sort of web application. So let's actually remind ourselves of that. Yep, so we're gonna be going through web. Um, let's go ahead and remind ourselves of that. So if we open up a Python terminal and we import requests, so what we're gonna try and achieve here, and let me actually launch a desktop, And we will launch a web browser. And we will go to Pwn College. And uh, is it actually still logged? I guess it's still logged in. That makes sense. Uh, and we go to log into some account. So we've got this demo account that we're going to log into, right? We hit the login page. It's a very common web application experience, right? Lots of web applications have some sort of account mechanism. You log into that account. How does that actually work under the hood? So the way that that works under the hood, and I think we want to capture what's happening with our browser. We will inspect. We will go to the network tab. This is a good way to see what the heck your browser is doing. And we will go to login, clear a bunch of that out, type in a username and password, hit submit. We don't care about saving. And we will see right here that we did a post request to this URL. So if we look at this, and Firefox does some parsing for us. If we, let's see here, if we look at these request headers, this is the request that our web browser made. So it sent post slash login, had a URL parameter of next. This is how it knows, hey, the next place we want to go is here. We have our host. We've got a user agent. We've got a whole bunch of headers. Most of them, for our purposes, we don't really care about. Uh, cookie is very important. A cookie is how we maintain state. This is how it knows that we're continuing to be logging, as, as we talked about in the last one. And let me also, I'm realizing, pull up the chat on my phone, just in case. Okay. And so we make this post request here and we log in. So if we want to mimic that, and also I guess one other thing I'll say is as part of this request, we sent a number of fields as form data, right? So this, all of our key value pairs separated by equals, all of these things separated by ampersand, and we're able to log in. We kind of dealt with this annoying nonce thing last time. We'll go ahead and deal with that again real quick. I finally understand what the heck was going wrong before. Uh, the issue is that this nonce is tied to your session cookie. So before we were trying to like do this without having a session cookie, you need a session cookie because the, the correct value of the nonce is intertwined with that session cookie. So let's, actually let's go ahead and do this first with curl. And uh, yeah, let's do curl dash b pwn college login. So we sent this request. Let's look here. We do a get to slash login, not a post. This time we're just doing a get. That's how you see the login field. We get a whole bunch of HTML. We also got this set cookie thing. So we're going to need this thing. Let's take this value and I'm just going to throw it in a text editor. So we've got our cookie and we're going to have our nonce thing that we're going to need. So we're just going to manually pull it out of here for now. This nonce thing. And uh, now we're, we're pretty much ready to go. So we want how does it format it? Name and password. So we want name equals demo and password equals very surprising password and nonce equals this thing. And the way that we're going to structure this with curl is that we're going to do curl and we do man curl. We're going to see that we can send a cookie with 
dash b. So dash b allows us to send a cookie or just dash dash cookie. Maybe we'll do dash dash cookie. Dash dash cookie equals this session thing. And you know what, just to be safe, we're gonna put this in single quotes. Since we're using bash, sometimes when you use double quotes, if you have something like a dollar sign in there, bash is gonna start interpreting it. So if we put single quotes, bash isn't gonna do any weird interpretation stuff. So we'll take the cookie, and then how do we do data? Let's see here, data, pretty sure it's just dash. We can do dash dash data ASCII. Or there's also, as we can see here, dash dash data, data URL encode, data. Let's just do data. Let's not mess around. Looks like there's also this form thing, which would also be, you know, we could do that also. Uh, but let's just use this simple data thing. So we'll say dash dash data. We'll take this. This is our, basically our form field, right? This is our username, our password and our nonce. So this cookie thing, as a reminder, this is how we are tying ourselves back to our previous request, our, a maintained state with the server. The server knows about this cookie thing, uh, this session value specifically. It has some sort of database or file or some sort of thing that's maintaining state in that thing. And that, that state is all tied to this value. The server uses this to look this up. And then we're using this to perform our login. Now we specifically need to go to a uh, specific endpoint. So what we need to do is go to HTTPS, this is just where we put in the URL, login. And this is what we need to log in. Let's go ahead and paste this. Oops, looks like we made some sort of mistake. What is unknown? Option dash dash cookie equals. It is not a fan of our cookie equals. So just dash dash cookie space. Maybe it's just dash dash cookie space. It is. And we see that we get a redirect. So we're being redirected to slash challenges. We do it again. Still being redirected to challenges. If we mess up our cookie. So we'll just put one, two, three at the start of it it is going to redirect us back to the login. Well, I guess in this case, it says you don't have permission to access the requested resource. It is either read protected or not readable by the server. The reason for that is now our nonce is no longer correctly tied to our session and we are sad. Okay, so let's fix our cookie. It's up to the server how long these session things get persisted for. We can also show what the heck that next thing is, right? So we saw in our browser that this is making a request to question mark next equals. If we specify that, so if we do uh, login, and we'll put this all in single quotes just to be safe. Next equals, this is a test. You'll see we are being redirected to this is a test. And if we do dash V, we'll see that we got a 302 with location set to this is a test. So whatever the heck we put in this next thing, we do a redirect to whatever the heck that next thing is. So this is kind of cool for if you're on some part of the website and suddenly you need to log in, that the, the login mechanism, we can redirect you to the login page save where we're gonna go back to in this question mark next equals thing. And then when you successfully log in, it brings you back to where you came from. So it's kind of a convenience feature. Of course, this is just web application specific. This isn't an HTTP thing. This is just how it implements this mechanism. Okay, let's see if there's any questions on that. Not seeing any questions on that. Cool. So, that is how we can log in. And as a reminder, just in case there's any confusion, this is the raw HTTP request. If this wasn't HTTPS and was just HTTP, we could actually just send this straight to the server over Netcat and this would work. Fortunately, because of HTTPS, it's not directly speaking HTTP. There's this secure socket layer in the middle, this SSL 
thing. We'll talk about it in a future module. It doesn't allow us, unfortunately, to do this with Netcap, but this is truly what the request would look like if it was speaking HTTP instead of HTTPS. Okay, and I guess uh, technically we don't see our form data in here. We can see our, the length of our data that would be in here, but the, there would be a new line and then that data, this right here would be sitting right here. And then this is the response we get, a redirect. Okay, so that shows us logging in. And in this case, we're using form data. So we're using this, this data where it's like key equals value, ampersand, key two equals value two, et cetera. In this module, we also show something called JSON. So you could imagine that instead, we could have something like this. Name, demo, password, something, nonce, something. And this would be another way of structuring it. So rather than URL encoding it, like this, where we do this again, this key value ampersand, and I think you know stuff like spaces get turned into percent twenties, etc. Another way of packing that data in a, it's just a different style is using JSON. Now the server is not going to respond to JSON for this particular request, but the this web application of Poem College it does use JSON for other things. So, for example, if we go to Dojo's now that we're logged in. And we go to, uh, let's even go to 365 Spring 2024. Let's go to Talking Web. Let's hit Inspect here. Let's do Network. And let's watch. It's kind of hard to scroll. Uh, let's watch what happens when I hit start. So we're making a post request, right? All of this is HTTP. It is web application. Everything we're doing, we're interacting with the server, all speaking HTTP. This thing just made a request. If we look at this right here, the request headers, it did a post to slash pwn college underscore API slash v1 slash docker. We just made a request to this thing. You'll see there's this strange thing, you know, as we were talking about the nonce before when we were logging in. Now it's just implemented slightly differently here. The nonce thing goes into the CSRF token. As a reminder, the nonce is not an HTTP concept. This is just a web application concept and it mitigates some security issues that we'll talk about near the end of the semester. Uh, so this header suddenly becomes relevant, we'll see. Uh, we see content type is going to be different than login. It's no longer uh, like something form data or whatever, like URL encoded form data content type. It is now application slash JSON and we're going to see that we're sending JSON. We've got this content length. We've got our cookie still in here. And now we've got a JSON payload. So we are just sending, hey, we want challenge level one, Dojo CSC365-S2024, module talking web, practice false. And we're sending all of that off to this API URL. This is all JSON encoded. So we can make this request occur as well. So let's go ahead and copy this. Uh, actually, it'd be easier to not copy it. So this was us logging in. So we're going to need this cookie still, this cookie we were using before, because this cookie is responsible for the server being able to know that we're logged in. Actually, maybe our cookie changed. Did our cookie change? It could at any point decide to set cookie to a new value, F8. It looks like it did, in fact, change. Well. Maybe it didn't. Let's, let's see what happens if we use this cookie. It's possible we need a new cookie. The server decided to set cookie us again. We'll see, maybe it didn't. Um, okay. Well, actually, here's how what we can do to see that. If we do this, oops, dash dash cookie. We look at this. Does this have a set dash cookie in it? F8. 
it does have a set cookie in it. Okay, so we are going to need, and I'm pretty sure every time we do this, it's probably giving us a new one. Yeah, every time we log in, it's giving us a new session cookie. So this is actually relevant. Uh, we can just take this particular one because this is a cookie in a logged in state. So we need to track our cookies here. So session equals this is now our new session cookie. And we're about to try to log, or not log in, now we're about to start a challenge. We're gonna do that by hitting Pwn College API v1 Docker. So we wanna hit Pwn College, um, Pwn College API v1 Docker. And we're going to do curl cookie. It's a reminder we decided it's not equal in there. We'll put our session in here. So this thing, now we know we're logged in. This is how the server knows what user is starting a challenge basically. And it's done in a secure way. We'll talk about that again in a later module. And so this is our cookie. And now we need some data as well. So I believe, let's see here. If we do man curl, I think it talks about JSON. Well, maybe it doesn't actually. Okay, that's fine. We can make JSON still happen though. So we want to do, so before we were talking about how we could have done this, except the server doesn't accept JSON, accepts form encoded data for logging in. Uh, this takes JSON. Yeah, so we're not, but I was really struggling on make multiple requests in response to stateful. So what, what I'm doing right now, so this person asking about making multiple requests in response to stateful HTTP responses using curl is exactly what I'm doing right now. So we're technically, we're not doing it against a challenge, we're doing it against a real world application. But doing stateful requests just means respecting this cookie thing. So we get a cookie, it does a set dash cookie. So as a reminder, if I do this, we log in, if we look at dash, dash v here, we see it did, it did a set cookie, right? This thing, we just copy this and make this now a cookie, right? And that's what we're doing here, dash dash cookie, whatever it returned to us. It said set cookie, okay, it's a stateful request, means use cookies, use this now. So yeah, we're not doing the challenge specifically, but this is exactly what it is. This is doing multiple requests statefully. That just means use cookies. Uh, respect that set cookie header. Okay, and now we're gonna do JSON here. So everything I'm showing, every mechanism I'm showing with interacting with a real web application, I'm showing all the mechanisms involved in really solving these challenges. I hope that's clear to everyone. These are the same things you're doing in these challenges. If anything, this is just a more difficult version of that. Okay. So we need to make this request. So let's just actually copy it here. We'll say copy. Actually, in order to copy it, we need to come over here, copy that. And then this right here is almost it. So let's go ahead and copy this actually. It's gonna show an error. There's gonna be a couple, oops, we just close your terminal. Create new terminal. Eh, we'll keep it this way. Well, now nah. PS1 equals, just trying to make it so that you can see more of it. There we go. Okay, so if we send this, we get this message. You don't have the permission to access the requested resource. It is either read protected or not readable by the server. So this did not work. There's two reasons this didn't work. The first, actually, we can also see what the heck's going on here if we do dash V. There's a couple of things that are important that are missing. So we're, we're technically missing or not following it exactly because of a whole bunch of headers. For example, we're not declaring ourselves as Firefox. We're not doing this like sec, fetch, des, whatever nonsense. Uh, but there's two things here that are important for the, this particular web application. The first one is this CSRF token. So in the same way as when we log in, we need to get that nonce thing. Here we actually do need to get uh, the CSRF token. And here's how we do it. We need to make a request here and extract that. So 
and we need to do it logged in. So what we're going to do curl cookie. So this means we're logged in. This is our state and we're going to go to this URL right here because this is what your browser is doing. If you think about it, right? We first made a request here. Let's make that request. Uh, and let's do it with dash V. So we could follow the JavaScript and stuff to figure out how the heck this request is being made, where it's pulling the nonce from. But if we look for this big random looking value, and I think it's going to be near the top. This is all the HTML for all the different challenges you can start. Oh, did it scroll out? Okay, here's what we're going to do. Type that to less. Yeah. This thing right here, this is what we're looking for. This is our big random value. So we got this thing. And now we just need to add in this header right here, CSRF token, this thing. So how do we do that? We are going to do this request right here. So we got our session cookie. We need to add in a header. The header that we're going to add is CSRF dash token, this value. And then we're missing one more header. So we are just saying dash dash data here, but this is not form URL encoded data, which is the default. This is application slash JSON. We need to set back, we need to specify the content type. Application JSON. And really we could mimic all of these things that the, our web browser is doing, and we would definitely be correct, but this is what is actually necessary here. So we, we are to break this down because it's a little bit complicated. And actually I'm going to split it out so that let's see here, do that. Got our CSRF token. We've got our content type, got our data and we've got our URL we're going to, right? So we need our cookie. This is how we know we're logged in. Uh, so we know what user ID to start a challenge for. We know um, yeah, what, what user ID to start a challenge for. And also we know what the CRS, CSRF token we're expecting for this user is. We specify the CSRF token so that we don't get that forbidden error. We specify that we're sending JSON. And then this is how we send JSON. We specify our data and we say, hey, we're starting the 365 Dojo, talking web module, challenge level one, practice false. And we post that all to here. Uh, I think we, if we wanted to be explicit, we could say X post. But I think because we have data, it implicitly does that. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Paste it. So it's taking a moment, assuming I don't have encoding issues. And it says success true. Guess what? We just started a challenge. So if I had code, now we're going to do some crazy level of inception. We're going to start a desktop in a desktop. Crazy. So we're on level one. Watch what happens now. If I do this again and change this from level one to level 17. It's going to take a few seconds. It's like literally bringing down your environment, bringing up a new environment. That's why, I mean, the web server is making that happen. The response takes a couple seconds. Our connection got killed in the desktop. We refresh and suddenly we are in level 17. If we change this practice thing to be true, we're going to suddenly be in practice mode. So we got a response that kills this desktop. We do this, we do this, and suddenly we are in practice mode. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It's like this is every web application you've ever used is just doing this sort of thing. We're doing these stateful requests over and over 
sometimes we're speaking JSON uh, through HTTP, right? We're, we're sending our data, we're making these post requests with JSON. And if you think about it, you just implement some web application and it's just taking in this data and the session data and technically in this case, you know, the CSRF token. But the, the critical stuff is like this right here. It says, hey, start, a, like we're going to this resource, Pum College API v1 Docker. We're going to start up this challenge environment. It's using Docker. That's why it's called Docker. And this is how we know which challenge to start up. We know what user to start it for because that's embedded in the session. The session is what user is currently logged in, among other stateful things like what's the correct CSRF token. And then the web server just like does that. And if we look at this with dash V, this is all we did. We just posted this and also the JSON data that curl technically is hiding from us. But I wonder if we can do like dash V, 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 sometimes multiple Vs. No, no, but it is sending also that JSON data. And that's all it is. That's how something that seems so complicated, starting a challenge is really just, you can do it in a few lines of curl. You can also do it with requests. And we get back this message. Also, we get a JSON response. You can see that it's sending us uh, right here, content type application JSON, content link 18. It sent us success true as its response. Okay, so that is really all there is to it. That's, there's not really much more to it. I guess just to demonstrate another thing that's not even as complicated, but if we come here into, let's say the settings, and we look at our SSH key, and we inspect this, we do network. We want to update our SSH key. We hit update. We're going to see, well, actually, this is a new method. It does this patch method. It's very similar to post. It just, it's called patch. Because right? the, the web server decides that it wants to use patch because, you know, we're like patching this value. We're updating this value. But you could have, the web server could have implemented it over post. And we're just doing that to Pwn College API v1 SSH key. We're sending JSON of just SSH key, whatever the heck is in here. And that is updating the JSON. If we wanted to come over here to Dojos and let's say go to 365 Spring 2024, something that's asynchronously happening. So you see this scoreboard here where there's nothing there currently, and then suddenly appears up, appears later. The way that that worked is we were speaking, uh, we were using JavaScript to fetch that asynchronously. So it didn't immediately show up with our immediate request. So for example, if we go to this dojo, so let's go and get ready to create another request. We need this cookie. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need this. And we are going to, oops, right here. CSE 365 spring 2024, 365 S2024 slash at the end. We make this request. We're gonna see, and you can actually see it right away. There's this like script defer on load, load scoreboard thing. You're gonna see, so if we grep for talking web, we'll see as soon as it loads, right? There's HTML responsible for displaying talking web. But if we look at this person who's rank one right now in CSC 365 Spring 2024, Ben uh, Max, we will see that they do not show up here on the score in this HTML, it just never appears. The reason for that, if we inspect and then go to network and refresh this, so we make a request to CSE 365 Spring 2024, and then shortly thereafter, one of these requests here, I think it's this one right here, JavaScript initiates this further request to Pwn College API v1 scoreboard CSC 365 Spring 2024 
<clears throat> underscore zero one. What the, the heck that means? Who knows? The HTML loads up the JavaScript, the JavaScript makes the request. The server is basically like giving your browser responses, telling it to make more requests in all sorts of ways. Uh, but this is one of those requests that gets made. It looks like we do need our CSRF token for this thing. Um, it looks like we're, well, maybe we don't. I think it's sending it, but I'm not sure we actually need that. So I don't think it cares for these get requests. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, let's go ahead and make a request to this. See what the heck's going on. So we wanna go to here, and this is a get request as well, get. Not sending any data. We might need our cookie, we might not. Let's see what happens. We'll send it with our cookie. It's going to take some moments and we're gonna get back a, this response. So we're getting a whole bunch of JSON. So we're getting standings, rank, one, this many solves, this user ID, their name is Ben Amax. This is their URL. This is their symbol, this is their belt, this is their badges, then we've got rank two, their number of solves, their user ID, their name, their URL, their symbol. Uh, so for example, here we can see their symbol is image dojo fork.png, whereas this person has, uh, where did it go? Static image dojo hacker.png, so it's fork.png versus hacker.png. If we look at the scoreboard, Guess what? They have these like different little icons. Probably uh, this first person is like an ASU person. This other person is not an ASU person. Uh, that's kind of what it represents. Uh, but we can see that's all encoded in here. And then we have JavaScript, and we don't care about JavaScript and HTML in this module. But for those curious, we've got JavaScript that's now taking this response, it's parsing it, it's dynamically constructing HTML and it's rendering it right here. And it's happening asynchronously. So that's why when we first hit this page, it's not there. And then it is there. The reason for that, you can see when I go to this page, it loads very quick, right? So if we go here, you can see how long this request takes. How long does it take to make this request? takes less than one second to make this request. If we go to this request and we time it, well, <laughs> it's kind of funny. We, we recently added a caching layer that makes this request way faster, uh, but previously this request would take on the order of like five seconds or something. And so if we didn't do it asynchronously, you'd be waiting for this page to, this page would take five seconds to load because it needed to do all that data processing and then shove it in there. Uh, so that's why we did it asynchronously. Now we have a caching layer, so we probably don't even need to do it asynchronously anymore. But this is, I mean, this is all just speaking HTTP. Hopefully that's clear to everyone. It's kind of a more complicated example. It's a real world example of all this HTTP stuff going on. But it's the exact same thing you're doing in these challenges. You just have a simplified, minified version of it. Um, yeah. Wait, why does it say? Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Oh, right, we were looking at the, the dojo page. So for this particular uh, dojo, we have different stuff going on. Right, the scoreboard's different. And probably we could see exactly what's going on for that also. We do inspect, network, this, this thing right here. We go to API v1 scoreboard CSE 365 S2024 talking web 01. Whereas before we were going to underscore 01. So it looks like for the entire dojo, you put an underscore. For a specific module, you put the module name. And that's how it determines which scoreboard you're going to get in response. And then you can parse this, you can use this data, you can do whatever you want with it. We can also see how many pages we have. Um, we also, let me see. 
we look at this, this is not rendering me. I think that's because I don't have any solves here. Okay, are there any more general questions about HTTP? Otherwise, I think I'm gonna wrap up this office hours. Between this office hours and last office hours, even though I didn't look at any of the challenges specifically, this is everything you need to know for doing these challenges. I guess one other quick thing. I'll close my terminal again. One other quick thing is doing this all in Python land. We wanted to do, let's say, this in Python. Well, let's actually do a JSON thing. Like if we want to start a challenge in Python, all we need to do is import requests, and we need to translate this curl syntax into Python syntax. So the way that this would look is requests.post, our URL, Um, yeah, we'll just keep typing. And then what else do we care about? We care about our cookie. So we can do cookies equals this. Cookie, cookies equals that. We care about this CSRF token. So that's headers equals Oops. And then what else do we care about? We care about this. So this is actually simpler than uh, curl. We, we don't actually need to say content type application JSON. Python will take care of that for us when we say JSON equals that. And we need this to be Python style right there. And I believe if we look at this, I think we got everything. We specified our cookies, we specified our bonus little header, and we specified our JSON. So we'll say response equals this. Print response. Response.text, success true. And the reason that I know to do it this way is that if we go and we search Python requests and we read the library docs here, it's going to talk about everything. So if you search for headers, right, one of the co concepts, if we want custom headers, it just says do headers equals this Python dictionary thing. So if you want to set your user agent, for example, this is how you could do that. But you can do that for any header. If we search for JSON, it is going to talk about JSON. JSON, more complicated post requests, JSON. So it talks about how you can have form encoded data here. This does form encoded data. Alternatively, we can do, let's see here. Someone's talking about JSON. Oh, I guess, yeah, we see it here. So this is talking about, um, yeah, it's talking about this whole application JSON thing. If you need that header set and you don't want to encode the dict yourself, you can also pass it directly using the JSON parameter. So this right here, JSON equals, we wanted to learn about cookies in Python requests, we could search for cookie. And it's also going to talk about cookies. Hey, cookies. Yeah, quick start cookies. And when we were logging in, so for example, if we wanted to replicate this login thing by doing requests.post HTTPS pwn college login data equals name, we'll just take this, take our nonce, and I don't know how long these nonces live for and these sessions live for, so this might not work because it might have already expired, but definitely lives long enough to do this 
back to back in a very reasonable time. And then we're, we need our cookies. So cookies equals this thing. Session, this, this, and we'll take that. Oops. Say response equals that. Response, response.text. Well, this did a redirect. We got HTML back. Uh, but if we look at response.cookies or response.headers, I think it it actually automatically took our cookies for us. It's it's kind of fancy the way it works. If we do it because it the responses we've seen does a redirect. Python request by default automatically follows that redirect. We can say allow redirects equals false. And it will not do that anymore. Now we see it's a 302, it's a redirect. Response.headers. We can see location, go to challenges, and that cookie, or we can do cookies. And we can do our session cookie. We can see that it did a set cookie to us. So that is, I guess, one other thing to point out. With Python and JSON, I noticed there was a r.json that raises an exception. I know it says what it's used for there, but in what case would JSON decoding fail? So for example, right now I have a response object. If I do response.json, it does a decoding error. And the reason for that is if we look at response.txt, this is not JSON. So you don't always get a JSON response. Sometimes you do get a JSON response, especially when you're using like a JSON API. For example, uh, if we go back to this thing, this uh, request where we're starting the challenge, we look at this. It takes a couple seconds because it's bringing down an environment, starting up a new environment. And we look at response.txt, this is JSON. And in fact, if we do response.json, now we can do stuff like this, right? We can specifically query the success of it, etc. And the reason this works is because it is JSON. So JSON's, the, the .json method isn't very fancy. Um, returns the JSON encoded contents of a response, if any. And I bet if we, well, it's probably kind of, not super easy to, you know, we could look through this, the source code for it, but it, it just tries to decode it as JSON. And if it's not JSON, it throws the exception. So this is JSON. However, as we said before, response equals, uh, yeah, this thing right here, clearly not JSON. It's still gonna try and parse it because you did response.json, but it's not JSON. So it, it tries to decode it, it fails, it's not JSON. Cool, any other questions? Otherwise I'm gonna wrap up this office hours. So this is one of the easier modules. Um, we're trying something a little bit new this year. We're trying more real world examples of all of this stuff, but believe it or not, between this office hours and the last office hours, we covered, I think, every just about every single challenge that exists for this module in just a more complicated scenario. First time trying to get the Python. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Looks like everyone is green. Thanks for the stream. All right. Yep. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, good luck finishing up the module if you haven't already. Definitely start sooner rather than later. As I was saying, if you, you were late to the stream, totally cool. Uh, but if you're late to the stream, this do in is very near. And the closer we get to this deadline, the more the server will melt down. And you are going to be very frustrated because the server will technically still function. And there's only so much we can do when 300 people are working on the assignment in the last two hours of the module. Uh, the server just, our capacity goes up like 10x in the last hours of the assignment. You will be frustrated. You will be able to still work on it, but you will be frustrated. Start on it now. You should have started on it a week ago, but start on it now because in 10 hours, you will be miserable working on this assignment. All right, thank you everyone and good luck. Let's.